Hi, Tara. How are you? I'm doing great, Shauna. It's great to be here with you. Oh, I'm so glad you're going to be doing uh, an interview with me. So I have got some questions to ask you, if that's okay. Sounds good. Great. So can we start off with, can you tell us about your business that you created and why it excites you? Okay, so my business is called Diamond Mind Consulting. And um, I called it Diamond Mind Consulting because um, I believe that everybody is like a diamond. And if you understand how a diamond is formed, um, a diamond in a, its rough state, it doesn't even look like a diamond. It looks like a chunk of coal. It's pretty, you know, it doesn't look, doesn't look all shiny and sparkly. And so a diamond, it has to be shined up has to be buffed up and and uh i think that it's like us right like we come here and we have work to do and there's a diamond underneath and i think that's important to remember with everybody you know sometimes we don't show our best side um many people have gone through a lot of challenges and traumas and struggles and of course that's reflected and we have to remember that everybody has that shiny diamond inside and and um, that it's just, you know, there's there's opportunities. And my mentor, Bob, always shares this really powerful story about acres of diamonds. And um, again, I'll just share really quickly around the story because it'll help why I called myself Diamond Mind Consulting was there was this farmer. This is a true story and actually in Africa where there's all these diamonds and this farmer, he was just really upset because he had spent many, many years, um, you know, looking all over his land for diamonds and couldn't find them. And um, he was, he was desperate. And unfortunately, he, uh, I think the way the story goes that he goes and he um, sells the land to another farmer and he actually jumps over a bridge and kills himself because he's lost everything and he's just so upset and the other farmer um he just goes about doing his thing and someone comes to visit him and on his mantle he notices this big rock this big black rock and the the fella is like do you know what that is and he says no the other farmer left it here it was i don't know what that is and he says it's a diamond and so it ended up being, and this is a true story, the largest diamond mind front, the dark, the largest diamond mind find in the world. Wow. And he, so the other farmer had no idea that he was sitting on this jackpot. And I think it's like all of us. It's so easy to kind of get caught up in, um, you know, what's going on on the outside or the results that we don't want, not realizing that there's there is just all these acres of diamonds inside of us and inside our mind and we just have to discover them wow i love that i love that story i, I hadn't heard that before that's great very appropriate for you I, sh I should pull it out and do it i i did as best i could but i could <laughs> no you did awesome <laughs> uh, what have you gained from working in your business <sighs> Okay, so the first thing is I wouldn't say, like, even the word gained doesn't resonate with me because what I do is really about serving. So it's not about me getting anything. Although, just like every other person on this planet, I have to feed my family and pay bills and do those regular things so that we can have, you know, have nice things. But I would say that what have, what has my business given me? Um, because I am truly a conduit. I really believe that I'm a conduit. And um, it's what it's given me is so much. It's given me the opportunity to really do my work and to, um, to do my work through so many other people and to have this opportunity to really serve and to be in service to others. And so, I mean, you probably notice I do a lot of things for complimentary and I offer a lot of different workshops and I show up with people every day complimentary because I'm always thinking how can I serve and that would be um, that was probably the best advice my mentor gave me was that to stop thinking about yourself if you want to really grow your business and if you really want to live a life of prosperity is to just start putting um, all your energy into serving how can I serve how can I help and so my my business, um, it has given me the opportunity to help a lot of people. 
I love that. What kind of obstacles have you had to face being in your in business for yourself? Well, in my particular business, I would say when you are a paradigm buster and you're helping people shift paradigms and helping businesses and, um, you know, we're in a big paradigm shift right now, for sure. I would say that um, the most, you said, what's the most challenging thing? Sorry. What are, what are, what kind of obstacles have you had to face being in business for yourself? Right. Being so an entrepreneur. The challenge is, is that the external is always reflecting the internal. So it's an inside job, right? Everything's created twice. So of course I've had lots of challenges and obstacles because I'm working with people's paradigms. I'm working with businesses paradigms. And so, you know, again, it's given me the opportunity to really go inside and do my work. And I believe that, um, it's probably been the toughest work I've ever done in my life, but yet at the same time, the most rewarding. And again, the challenge is have been because when you're working directly with people like on this level, um, it would be so much easier to just go and get a job at the grocery store. <laughs> Or, I don't know, or to go back to when I was doing physio at the hospital, you know, union job, everything taken care of, don't really have to think. I mean, I just have to kind of, you know, hit protocol, no problem. This, my work is challenging because I have to take 100% responsibility for everything. And uh, I actually just finished some training with Dr. Hugh Len. He's the Hopohono doctor that became very famous because he healed a whole ward of psychically, of, of um, psychologically like super insane criminals. Mm -hmm. And um, the whole practice is about taking 100% responsibility for everything. Now, I know some people out there that are watching this might not necessarily like that. <laughs> But I think that's what my work is about. It's about recognizing that I couldn't see, you know, this in you unless it existed in me. And so the real work is not about fixing anybody or helping anybody, but doing the work within me. And the more I do the work within me, the more I actually am in a position to help other people make the shifts that they need to make. So I would say that it's, just being in business for myself is I've had to really take responsibility and do my work. And um, at the same time, it's working because I've never experienced um, as much prosperity in every level of my life, which is like, you know, health, happiness, and wealth, um, as I do now. I, I mean, it's amazing, but it shows me again, because the external is always showing you your results always tell you the truth. So I believe that creator guided me into what I do. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, you know, it's been big work, but at the same time, I've been rewarded for doing the work. So, yeah. Awesome. So what are three words to describe your business? Three words to describe my business. Consciousness. Paradigm shift. Prosperity. Mm, love it, love it. Uh, what is your proudest business moment? Well, I am incredible. Like I absolutely love the people I work with, and um, and I've I've created a lot of prosperity by working with a lot of different people from around the world. But some of my proudest moments are just how I'm able personally to just show up in a situation. Um, just you know, it could be some people having a conflict and how I have this ability now to just show up and, and to be that harmonic energy 
um, where it would have been so easy to get kind of sucked into it, you know, in the past. And so, yes, I'm helping and doing really wonderful things out there. But I would say like just within my own family, within my own life, within, you know, my own community is this ability to just really, um, truly leave others with the feeling of increase and to, yeah, just make others feel better off than they, than I found them. And I think that this is something I experience a lot. And so it, that feels good. So yes, I'm helping people, you know, really like, you know, increase their business and um, create better relationships and all that. And I absolutely love what I do, but I think it's just, it's just how I can show up differently in my life. Awesome. What's something that you learned on this path that you wish you knew at the beginning? Well, I have learned so much, but I would <laughs> say the biggest thing that I have learned is that everything is coming from inside of me. Everything. Every single thing. Everything. It's, it's truly an inside job. And, you know, and, and I also would have to say is the understanding my mind, understanding, you know, how consciousness works um, again, which is okay. You know, if I am experiencing a lot of upset or uh, let's say poverty outside of me, again, that I have to go inside with that. And if I can take that responsibility and go inside with that, um, that the miracles are real. And, and, you know, I really believe that you can heal, you can heal everything within if you're willing to take responsibility. And that's the biggest thing that I've learned, that it's completely an inside job. Absolutely. So what is on your business wish list for the next 10 years? Hmm. Well, I pretty much my superpower right now is prayer. <laughs> And uh, I, I think that I am just being divinely guided right now. I mean, um, I was telling you early before we jumped on that, you know, I am a founder of, uh, of a, a business called The Event. And I came together with Dr. Devin Rosna and Mike Winner, a couple of movie directors, uh, Doc, uh, Joel, um, Josh Dosol and a captain from the military, from the army, uh, Alex Zek. And we came together, so we're all founders. And we magnetized 130,000 people together and growing. Um, some of the world top as far as medical experts and uh, you know, just people from all walks of life really, and it's been amazing. I never could have imagined, and that was not part of my plan. <laughs> I just wake up every day and I say, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say? And to whom? And it was Josh Del Sol who wrote the movie uh, documentary, Take Back Your Power. He contacted me and said, hey, you need to come to this meetup with these other individuals. We really need you to be there. And then within two days, um, I was brought into this awesome you know, team, into this awesome event. Um, what I would love to see happen, and, and again, because of course that means that creator is saying more work to do, right? We're bringing all these people, so you have more work to do. Um, it's less about what's going on on the outside and more what's going on on the inside. And so where I would love to see my business grow in the next 10 years is that I just get to a place where I am just totally listening as a conduit all the time and just being guided and, and just really truly just in this place to just take action on that. And so and I know that's been happening, but I would love to just be able to serve. Part of one of my bigger goals, and it, and it was really crazy how this came to me with Tony Robbins, was I saw Joan of Arc. I didn't even know who Joan of Arc was. When I was given the word Joan of Arc, so I researched it. And um, I, was, I resisted. I was like, oh my God, I don't know what this old Joan of Arc thing, whatever that is. And so I wrote down my intention was to be a conduit and to positively and significantly impact over a billion people. And I was like, that is crazy. <laughs> 
I believe that is completely possible. So I would love to positively and significantly impact over a billion people for the good. Love it. What advice do you have for a prospective entrepreneur? For a prospective entrepreneur, for someone who wants to maybe start their own business and mm -hmm. start moving yes. in that direction, yep. I would say that First of all, it's really important that you get clear on what you want, you know, get clear. Like, you know, if let's say you're going to start up a business, I don't know, let's say you're going to start up your own hairdressing company or, um, you know, you're going to start up a catering business, get really clear and make sure that that's what you want, that that's what you really, really, really want. And um, I would say, write down, you know, well, what is my personal and what is my professional goal? I would say to get a coach, I would say to get a mentor of some sort that can guide you. I, I have coaches for everything. I have, you know, my fitness coach, I have my cooking coaches, I have my, you know, my mindset coaches. Um, I think it's really important to have really good coaches and you don't get a financial coach like, like Shauna. Um, and I would say, then from there, I would get really clear on your why. And there's this saying, you know, in self-development and personal development that I never understood before. And I actually lead people through a process called the seven whys. It is powerful. Um, if you don't know why you're doing something, uh, and, and you haven't connected to that bigger why, the, the theory is your why has to make you cry, I don't think that it will last. Mm -hmm. So I think that it is really important to know your why. And I think when most people start going into their why, they think, you know, it was like me, oh, I'm doing this for my kids. But when you go deeper in, there's something magical about the asking yourself, and that's, that's what you have to do. I mean, you just have to ask yourself seven times, well, why, why? Right? Why am I going to start up this catering company? Why is this important to me? Why is it important my personal and professional goal be around this? Um, if you don't start crying by about your sixth, seventh why, you might want to start rethinking or getting support and, and looking at you know why you're doing what you're doing because most people don't know why they're doing what they're doing. Most people have goals that are not even their own goals and they just think it's a good idea or maybe I can make a lot of money. But if you don't um, do something that lights you up and kind of scares you at the same time. Unfortunately, I don't know what the stats are, but I know they're, they're really high that most businesses, you know, in the first year, um, there's a majority will, you know, they don't tend to thrive or do well. Um, I think it's important that if you're going to be in business for yourself, and I think there's no better time personally to be in business for yourself. I think that people in our communities now and around the world are looking at, you know, supporting local, kind of getting rid of the whole supporting corporate businesses. Um, you know, I think I think it is it's just such a great time to to do this for sure. But I would say get a coach, get someone who can help you. Love it. Great, great advice. Before working in your business, what was the most unusual or interesting job you ever had? Mm, I've had a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of a jack of all trades, Shauna. So actually, when I moved to the Okanagan and, um, you know, I always wanted to be a nurse because all my family were nurses, but I shouldn't have been a nurse. So that's why I'm not a nurse. I actually moved into physical therapy and I and I got really bored of that really fast. Um, but while I was going to university for physical therapy, I actually worked for John Bylands at Bylands Nursery and I drove the Kubota tractors and went on budding crews and learned all about grafting and budding. And at the same time, I was working at Flintstones Park and I was renting out Park. Park. I love Flintstones Park. <laughs> I was working like just, I've always been one of those really hardworking people. I think at that time I did, I had three jobs. I did Flintstones Park on the weekends, John Violins, you know, I worked there in the summers. Um, and um, yeah, and then I, I'd rent out jet skis after I was done, you know, universities. And then I actually jet skied for Canada. I actually went to the world finals oh. and jet skied for Canada in the at Lake Havasu, Arizona. A lot of I people don't know that about me that that's I awesome. jet skied on the professional. And that's because I was renting out actually just down here 
You can see the boats down there. I actually worked at the jet ski rental down there. <laughs> I really did. Isn't That's it awesome. crazy? That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> really crazy. I love it. What tools do you use to support yourself? I think self-care is the best care. I have incredible tools and that's, um, you know, I always say, okay, so you got to be the person that's attained, you know, that big, big goal. You already got to be that right now. So I always, in my mind go, okay, so if I already am this person, and I'm supporting this many people, what kind of self-care do I need? for me. And I've got to like live in this space all the time as I've already reached it. Right. So, um, meditation is one of my go-tos uh, every single day and night. Uh, meditation is very, very key for me. I spend a lot of time outside, a lot of time in prayer and with God. Um, and, and to me being in nature is definitely where I can connect to, you know, God or creator much easier for me. Um, I actually love, like, I'm very creative and artistic. I love, I love to create recipes. That's maybe something mm. people don't know about me. So, and I love to cook my family wonderful meals. So I'm also an Ayurvedic coach. So I'm often experimenting. I actually have the next book I need to publish. Well, I have one before that, but is a, is a, a eat clean recipes and combining mindset in that because I, I love creating nutritious recipes that actually taste good and I love supporting I'm like your biggest support farmers market support local talent you know that's kind of me um, that is actually for me as self-care is is cooking I love to cook uh, yoga uh, exercise I'm actually doing this thing with one of my partners, Dr. Devin Ross and I were doing the 75 hard, which is hard because it's two 45 minute workouts. So I've been, you know, really early morning getting out into nature and spending that 45 minutes, um, which is a new practice I've actually brought in instead of, you know, sometimes you and I have actually passed mm, during yes. the day, <laughs> right? But I got to do two of those now. So I'm finding the time. But I think that the more people we serve and the more we're, we're doing good in the world, the more self-care, you know, we've got to really take great care of ourselves. And so for me, um, you know, even I was just contemplating yesterday, just the power and just taking a 20 minute nap, mm -hmm. you know, and just, you know, I schedule everything. So I'm like, yeah, I got to start scheduling that nap in because I'm actually going to create more success the more I can have those moments to just step away and go inside and just chill, right? So. Absolutely. So I know these are both important things to you. So how do you balance your career and family? I am a master scheduler. And I encourage <laughs> me all too, my me clients, too, I'm huge. I do my clients, they always say, how do you do everything you do? Because I do like a hundred times more things now than I've ever done. And it feels like I do way less where before I was doing, like, I thought I was doing so much, but I was like a hamster on it, like just on a wheel, just going around in circles. Um, being a master scheduler, like I schedule in dates, like my husband and I do a date night, Friday nights, like everything is scheduled in my self care is scheduled in. I start my day between 430 and 5am that is scheduled in everything that I do is scheduled in. And um, actually, one of my um, colleagues who is from Lebanon, living in France right now, Nadim, and I have been working on a very special scheduling book around, you know, what we have learned over the years. And it's sustainable, like it's actually erasable, it has technology, that's his part of it, not mine, because I'm not the tech person, um, that'll have an app. And you, if you're in a meeting, you can take a picture, send that to your the rest of the group. So we're actually going to be launching that hopefully soon. It's actually done now. Um, but it's, I just schedule everything in. And for me, like time is an illusion. I always say, you know, you always hear people say, oh, I don't have enough time for this or that. It's about prioritizing time. So I just have my, you know, my priority things that I need to get done. One thing too, is I start my day super early and by about noon, I am done work. I try to be done work. I might take and, and, you know, have conversations with people that just really need a little extra support. 
Um, but I usually do, you know, another self-care practice and then it's all about my kids. It's all about being present with them and they're getting to that age though, which has been really tough for me is like, you know, we used to like do a lot of cooking together and doing things together. And now they're like, they want to be with their friends. So I'm kind of transitioning in this time and finding it's yes, they're there and they're maybe watching me do it, but they're kind of doing their own thing a little bit more. And, um, so yeah, it's been a time of transition too. Awesome. Do you have a favorite quote? Oh my gosh. I have so many quotes, so many favorite quotes. So many, I am like the quote queen. Oh, I love Marianne Williamson's quote on, um, I will say it, but I just don't know the whole thing off heart, but I'd have to say that that is my favorite quote, but it won't be hard to find it because it's very famous. Just let me look it up here. My deep, our deepest fear. Want me to read it? Sure. Go for it. So good. Our deepest fear. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. You are meant to shine as children. uh, You are meant to shine as children do. We were born to make and manifest the glory of God that is within us. And it's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And as we liberate and as we're liberated from our fears, our presence automatically liberates others. Wow, that's beautiful. I, I can see why it's stuck with you. <laughs> I love that quote. <laughs> if given a chance, who would you like to be for a day? You know, what's interesting is I was driving the kids back from the ski hill and we always have friends. So there's a couple of friends with us and I try to make it fun so that they're not wanting to be on gadgets. And then we were asking <laughs> these questions and that was one of the questions that came oh. up. And I found it really difficult because an older version of me would have said, you know, I wanted to be one of my mentors or I would have loved to, yeah, you know, like be somebody you see is experiencing a lot of just joy or um, success. And I I just want to be me. I, I don't, I, I think it's for the first time that I just, I'm, I would just want to be me. I don't know. That's awesome. If your house was burning down, what is the one non-living thing you would save? Non-living thing I would save. I'm someone who really doesn't have attachments. It could be part of my Vipassana, spending years in in a Buddhist practice. Um, Non-living thing. Oh my gosh, Shauna. I've never even thought about that. That was a question I should ask the kids too. Um, I think it would probably be my computer actually, because I have so much really important content and information. And I, at first I thought photos, you know, like our family photos, but then I'm like, yeah, but they're all on my computer. So I would make sure to take my computer. Cool. Uh, What are your top three life highlights? Top three life highlights. Well, one of them for sure is traveling around the planet and all the incredible places that I've been able to go. I mean, I've been, I've lived in Costa Rica and the Cayman Islands and been to Europe and, you know, Australia. Oh, everywhere. So the traveling. That's awesome. Yeah. um, That would be one of them. And just how cool I, I started, you know, when I was quite young. So, and I still, unfortunately, because we can't right now, but I've always like, I mean, my kids have been to Australia. I mean, we, we love to travel, which is great. Um, I did a commercial 
in the Cayman Islands with Blake Sheldon. And oh, really? I, I really did. And that's a highlight. And I still am kicking myself in my, my butt because I had a boyfriend at the time and he offered to pay me and offered to take me out for dinner. And I was like, no, no, no. And it was just me and him. They brought all these girls, about 40 girls, beautiful girls from um, Florida. And they put them all behind us. But yet they were supposed to be in with Blake. And then they, and Blake said, no, I want Tara. She's the girl. So <laughs> I did a whole bunch of commercials for CMT with Blake Sheldon. On really? The wow. I yes. And yes, it's still funny looking back because he was like, tried to pay me. This is like an older version of me. I, I couldn't even receive the money. And yet I had worked. I was just such an over giver at that time. And I was, I didn't want to also hurt my boyfriend's feelings. And oh my, now I'm like, oh, <laughs> could at least went out for dinner. <laughs> um, so I did that. That was really cool. And I would say the other thing, you know, is definitely, you know, the, just I've always been very athletic. So even the whole jet ski circuit and, you know, traveling around and jet skiing and going to the world finals, which were crazy with some of the best in the world in uh, stand up and sit down jet skiing. Cause it was just amazing. So I don't know. I'd ha like, now I'm thinking, well, God, it was when my kids were born, right? <laughs> Well, that's, that's, everybody says that. It's, nice. I know, yeah, it's kind I of nice to hear those answers that I did. I, I, I was going to cool. say that, but yeah. I, I'm just thinking like, I've had so many incredible yes. things that I've, and I'm going to walk away from this and it's a great question and there's going to be more, but those are the ones <laughs> that kind of pop up. Awesome. <laughs> uh, I asked you tons of questions. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Um, well, let me just ask. I would say that I would love to just share a message. I think that there's a lot of people um, going through a lot right now. And, you know, Shawna, you and I were discussing this before this call. I mean, some people, there are some people that are thriving out there. And, and but I think that in general, a lot of people are having a tough time. And, um, you know, I think that just remember that nothing is happening. It doesn't happen to us. It happens for us. And everything is an opportunity. And so, you know, there's no better time than right now to get the internal right, to get your mind right. And, and whatever you focus on, it's going to grow. So if you're focusing on the things that you have no control over, and if you're focusing on your upsets and conflicts, well, unfortunately, you're going to magnetize more of that to you. But if you focus on all the good, and there is a lot of good, because if you look for it, you're going to find it. And if you start focusing on maybe the things that you are being asked to change in your own life and the things that um, and start moving towards the things that you do want and focus on on the good and and most importantly like all the wonderful things that you have to be grateful for that you will magnetize more of that and so i think that right now there's a lot of opportunities so that's what i want to share that's awesome. I really enjoyed uh, listening to things I'd never heard. <laughs> so we've known each other for, for a while now. And it's like, wow, that was really cool. I, I'm very thankful, uh, Tara, that you took well, the time. You never gave me any of these questions. Before. No, no. I would have actually taken some time <laughs> and thought about them. So I'm grateful because at the same time, I've just had to be like on the spot. But I'm going to definitely contemplate these questions more. Good. Well, thank you. And uh, I will share information on how you can reach out to Tara. So everybody have a great day. Thank you.